Would you like to learn how to make chocolate covered pop rocks at home? Well today on WTF we're going to show you how to coat our culinary crystals in chocolate. Hello and welcome to WTF where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Garin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you how to do these recipes in your kitchen. So subscribe and you'll get notified of our content when it comes out. And this week we are going to be showing you how to make chocolate covered culinary crystals, also known as pop rocks. And this is such a really fun thing to do because I think we all grew up with Pop Rocks and uh, you know we've been carrying them for a long time. We show, we've shown you how people how to flavor them, but today we're going to show you how to cover them in chocolate. Now, Scott, for the people who you know, have not caught our other episodes before, can you talk a little bit about what exactly are culinary crystals? Yeah, so they're basically just a sugar, uh, sugar and lactose that is carbonated and it is set uh, very much like a hard crack sugar or like candy, mm -hmm. uh, so that when you eat them, it releases any carbonation in it and it has this popping effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we get so many questions because people want to use them in really creative ways. So we get people asking, can you put them in ice cream? Can I put them in milk? Can I put them in some kind of uh, <laughs> cocktail? Can you talk um, about what are the maybe the challenges and limitations when working with culinary crystals? So culinary crystals, are like any sugar. If you put it near moisture, it's going to absorb that moisture. But the difference with this is that there's carbonation on the inside, so it's going to pop prematurely. It's mm -hmm. just going to start popping anytime it's near any moisture. So either keeping it in the bag sealed or putting it into, let's say, like a you know mason jar that's sealed, that's where you want to keep them. That's why we also coat them, mm -hmm. because that coating will help prevent moisture from getting in. Also, any heat, so excessive heat is going to you know, heat them up just gently and that carbonation will pop, or pressure. Mm -hmm. So if you squish them, they're going to pop. So really, you just want to stay away from those three things and you're going to be completely fine. Yeah, and when you talk about coating them, can you be more specific about what that process looks like? Yeah, so when we're doing just regular um, like culinary crystals, we can have these flavor drops and we put them into a little bit of what we call flavor base. Mm -hmm. It's basically like a flavorless fat that just goes on the outside. And what that does is that fat acts as a protective layer so no moisture can get in. Mm -hmm. It's clear, it melts the second you eat it, you don't notice it, but it's going to help deliver that flavor and keep the pop rocks or the culinary crystals from popping. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about that process, we have an entire episode all about it. You can catch it at the end of this episode. Um, but today we are talking specifically about chocolate. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, when you're working with chocolate, what to watch out for? Yeah, so the best way you're going to do it is to temper your chocolate. Can you melt chocolate and coat the culinary crystals with just melted chocolate? Yes, mm -hmm. you can do that. Uh, if you want it to have that nice beautiful sheen on the outside, you're going to want to temper your chocolate, which mm -hmm. means to uh, heat it to a very specific temperature, cool it, and then heat it again. And we like to add a little emulsifier. We did an entire episode when we made bonbons, mm -hmm. which kind of showed the process of tempering chocolate. And we talked more in depth there, so you can watch that. Links in the description below. But uh, when we're doing this, we can get a lot more fun shapes and different shapes out of our culinary crystals by using chocolate and also deliver flavors on top of chocolate because who doesn't love chocolate? Right. Yeah. And one of the things that you said earlier on is that you said, you know, too much heat is going to make them pop. Mm -hmm. So obviously right now we're heating up chocolate, we're cooling down chocolate. What is the appropriate temperature that, you know, the chocolate should be at? I like to keep it at around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. uh, at around 100, you're going to get some reaction. Anything more than that, you're really going to get a lot of popping. And you don't want to end up with just, you know, like duds in there, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have as much effervescence, as much pop as you possibly can out of these. And it takes a little bit. And if you have a control freak, you can really uh, control the temperature of your chocolate. If you're doing it at home and you don't have one of these, uh, definitely a double boiler. Mm -hmm. Just be careful to not get any uh, moisture into that chocolate because also chocolate doesn't like water. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. Use a thermometer, get it to around 90 degrees. It's going to be completely fluid. 
uh, whether it's tempered or not, and you're going to be able to then put it into your um, culinary crystals. Okay, can we see the process of that happening? Is it just scooping it in? I, are there any special steps yeah, people should know? It's so easy. It, it, mm -hmm. it really, there's no perfect ratio. It really depends on what you're doing. So if you want more chocolate, you can absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. You can make it into bars. We have three different types here, Danny. So if you wanted to show, you know, just those, okay. um, we can do that right after we're done because this is so easy. All right. Uh, I'm going to do about a two part culinary crystals to one part chocolate here mm -hmm. and that's going to give us more like a clustery uh, look to our culinary crystals and you see a little bit of popping there that's totally fine mm -hmm. you're going to eventually get that so mix it up okay and that's basically it now at this point if I wanted to flavor it we have flavor drops there mm -hmm. and those are uh, you know, fat-based flavorings and alcohol-based flavorings. I can put a few drops in there. It's going to make this whole thing taste like an orange chocolate or a mint chocolate or a raspberry, whatever it happens to be that you want to make. Here's where I would add it because it's fluid. I can mix mm -hmm. it up and literally all I have to do is let this cool and then we're done. So these are like clusters. If you wanted to add more chocolate, you can get something like these shards here, okay. which make great tweels. So you Ooh. get the chocolate flavor, you get that yes. pop, that kind of crunch. And it's not just one dimensional. It's not just crunch and it's over. It's that lingering, you know, popping effervescence that really takes a dessert to the next level. Yeah. If you do go onto our website and we have um, all of these flavor drops, I believe all of ours are either alcohol based mm -hmm. or oil based. But if you have some in your own pantry that you want to use, just check the label and make sure it's not water based, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. So then let this be cool and that's it. Yeah, so that's all it is, is it's done at this point. Okay. You can then that take it and you can break it up. It, it's the, one of the easiest demos you'll ever see because there's no right or wrong ratio. Mm -hmm. We have three different ratios here and all of them work and they all help prevent the popping. Obviously, the more chocolate, the less popping you're going to get. Yeah. But th something like this where it's broken up, you can have this on top of any kind of dessert, right? Okay. And you and can have like it a bar. around. Yep. And obviously all these in the center are completely coated in the chocolate, so you're going to get a, a nice coating. The ones around the exterior will mm. give a little bit of popping with like the air, but if I put it in there, you're not going to get uh, too much. Okay. Hmm. This is like, this one reminds me of, um, what are those, crunch bars with a little rice yes. in them? This yes, This is kind exactly. of what it reminds me of, but you do get that popping in the back of your mouth. Yeah, you get just a little, that immediate crunch mm -hmm. with the chocolate, and then you get that nice lingering mm, kind of really effect nice. from the uh, culinary crystals. The okay. second ones here are, are similar to the clusters that we just made. You can get this really beautiful texture, mm -hmm. right, that you can either break up. These are great. I, I've always you know, wanted to put them as a thin layer in between a cake, so mm -hmm. you get like a little, you know, mm. uh, something like a 4th of July. If you wanted to coat this in white chocolate, you could absolutely do that, and boom, you could put them in the middle of a cake or even on top, and then you get that almost fireworky kind of effect. That you Yeah, create. this one has so much more pop to yeah. them than these last ones here. Like, this is really delightful. Yeah, there's a lot of Pop Rocks mm -hmm. or culinary crystals. Uh, crammed into that so you're going to get more effect off of it and I keep putting them into the water just to show that they're not you would see a lot of bubbles coming up and a lot of sound coming mm -hmm. off of them but they're not that that chocolate is doing a great job to okay. uh, prevent the culinary crystals and then the ones on the end are, are similar to what we made here okay. um, a little bit more so than this just a little bit more chocolate so it's really figuring out where you like it. Uh, so we'll give three different ratios so people can then do it on their own at home. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, this one would be good also if you did it nice and thick, you could have a nice chocolate bar. If you temper it, then you'd have this really beautiful, uh, you know, sheen to the outside. And then you'd have this great, almost like homemade crunch bar. Mm -hmm. I think this one might be my favorite. So this yeah. one I think has my favorite balance of chocolate to pop. It's also making my mouth water. So <laughs> I'm having a hard time talking, so I apologize. <laughs> And of course, uh, before we wrap up this episode, we have to talk about the giveaway because I know people are now like, I'm excited to try this at home. So if you want to try it and win a one pound bag of the culinary crystals, um, just leave in the comments below. What do you think you might do with this once you've coated it? Because I know you mentioned cake and I was like, that's a great idea, yeah. but there are a ton of other ideas out there. So we look forward to hearing what you come up with. And I just want to say, if you are like, I love this idea, but I don't want to temper my own chocolate, I don't want to go through the process, um, and you want to test it out ready-made, we do have a limited stock of these Texturous Choco Sparkies available 
which are, whoops, I knocked that down, <laughs> which are pre-coated, so these are ready to use. So kind of, we only have a limited stock of them, but they are super fun and easy. So if you want to try it without going through the process, and they're available on the website as well. All right. And I think that about wraps it up yeah, for us today, doesn't it? Nice, easy one, but yeah, definitely effective and you can use it in just about anything. Yeah, so remember, check out our episodes around culinary crystals, tempering chocolate, and as always, all the recipes in the links in the description below. So until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Gary.